Sampling distributions pave the way to understanding confidence intervals. Let's imagine this sampling distribution here uh, from the binomial distribution. The question is, how many people say yes to the survey when taking samples of 11 each? So the way we're assuming this is set up here is there's a large room full of people, and I want to take samples of 11 people at a time. And out of my 11 randomly chosen people in an SRS, I'm going to see how many said yes. Every so often I'm going to get nobody who says yes, but that's not very likely. And every so often I'm going to get 11 out of 11 that say yes, and that's not that likely either, but a little bit more than this end. And you can kind of see that uh, it starts to peak around 7, and 8 is a little higher than 6, so maybe the average is somewhere between 7 and 8. Anyways, the point of this is that this distribution here represents where all of the possible options are likely to fall. All the possible results I could get are likely to fall. So let's take a look at only some of those bars now. These bars here are, seem to be the most likely ones, and they're all pretty close to the mean, whereas some of these orange ones here are kind of far off and not as likely. If I take this region here in, in yellow, Let's say that that adds up to about 90% of the data. So I'm actually going to just draw a quick little box around that middle 90% of this data. And you see from this that if I only want to promise you the middle 90% of my data, I really only have to say I'm likely to get between a 4 and 10 people who say yes. I don't need to say 0 to 11 that would cover the all 100% of the possible options, but if I just said I'm 90% confident that I'll get between 4 and 10 people, all of a sudden I've given you a little bit more information, I've narrowed down my range. One of the things you'll notice here is that this distribution looks fairly, fairly similar to the normal curve, and in fact when you have large enough sample sizes, they start to look very similar to the normal curve. And because the normal curve has some properties that make it very easy to do uh, area calculations on, we can actually predict uh, with very good mathematical certainty where the middle 90% of the data is in the normal curve, or the middle 95% or 99%, whatever it is that we're looking for. So just as a quick example, let's take uh, two standard deviations from the mean. We always know the mean is here in the middle. And one standard deviation is always right around here where the curve uh, starts to change shape. And then two standard de deviations down a little bit farther. So let's go negative two standard deviations down and two standard deviations up. And what I would like to know is what is the probability that uh, you're going to be within two standard deviations or between negative two and positive two standard deviations on the normal curve. And the way that uh, we learned how to do that is by using our calculator. So let's take a look at our uh, second VARs, which brings up our distributions. Let's go down to normal CDF, and we're going to find the area under the normal curve between negative two and positive two standard deviations. So I do normal CDF to negative two comma two, and when I hit enter, I get 0.954, roughly. 0.954. And what this represents here is the area under the curve between negative 2 and positive 2 standard deviations. So I'll just color this in real quick. Negative 2 and positive 2 standard deviations. And if I wanted to say how confident I was that a randomly chosen value is going to fall in between those, I would say 95.4% confident that that's going to happen. It's the same idea as what we did here with the uh, binomial distribution, where we took the middle, let's say, roughly 90% of our data, and we could then construct a range, 4 to 10. Here we constructed a range negative 2 to 2 uh, standard deviations, and whenever we have uh, an actual data set, we can convert these z-scores into standard data values. The nice thing is is that we won't have to do all this by hand uh, going forward because our calculator has some handy functions that allow us to directly uh, deal with the sampling distribution and create a confidence interval right in the 
calculator function.